Dude, somebody just let... Dude, there is something, like, really bad. Like, I don't even know how you're, like, not seeing that. Because there is a real mark on my very, very nice lens. This is Random Vaughn. Uh, thanks for wanting to pour him, I believe. Uh, you spoke with Allie yesterday. Fantastic. Am I getting you at okay time? Oh, great. So, um, I know that she went over the zoning on the warehouse and the square footage and all those kind of things. Um, and it sounded like I needed to get on the phone to move this, uh, you know, potential location forward. Uh, more than happy to do that. Uh, so what information would you like from us? Obviously, we're, we're looking to get an intent to lease signed on the property um, and include it in our, or potentially include it in our application with the Department of Health. Okay guys, it's back on the crazy training train that we were on yesterday. I'm bringing Lacey up to speed on what I actually got done. So you guys are probably gonna go see some time lapse here. Um, yeah. Okay guys, just uh, give me a little heads up. Um, I, Literally think we finally got done with a brand new organizational structure for management training. It is a process. Uh, I'm sure it will, will be still more work to do on that, but I got to do this conference call and then we're going right into our uh, 10 o'clock meeting today. Hoping Steve's early because we got to definitely film that. Um, don't know how much of that we're going to be able to show you guys, but just even for internal use. Um, I like going back over the footage and just seeing what I miss. You know, when you're in a thing and people are talking and you're trying to think of what they're saying and then what you convey, it's at least helpful for me to be able to go back and be like, man, did I really communicate what I wanted to communicate? And a lot of times uh, I end up wanting to, you know, say things a little bit differently, take some more time to really articulate because the big point is just to make sure everyone actually understands. So the one thing that I just kind of want to start off with is kind of giving a little bit of perspective because with um, most of the people in this room, I've not gotten to have a one-on-one -on -one sit down with and that kind of stuff. And that is truly guys, just because of scheduling, like I'm going to get to it, but there's a lot of you and only so many hours in the day for me. Uh, but that does not in any way, shape or form mean that like you guys aren't just as important to whoever else I talk to. And uh, the real reason for this meeting is because what we've found with having some people that recently exit when I did get to sit down and talk to them is finding out how much stuff is you guys have been communicating to either each other, to a shift lead, to a shift lead, to an assistant manager, to an assistant manager, to a manager, and then it just dying and me never hearing anything about it. And so I kind of want to give you guys some context of like uh, how we look at running this company and what we do and kind of just our mindset. So there's two things. Um, that kind of affect, in my opinion, all procedures for all companies. If you work at McDonald's, if you work here, if you work for an automaker, if literally if you're on an assembly line to the retail space. And those two concepts are kind of just, are we in a finite situation or are we in an infinite situation? So it's kind of game theory. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this. I'm sorry if you haven't, I'm just gonna repeat it. Uh, but I'll put it this way. When I was an employee, no one ever talked to me about this kind of stuff. So. A finite game, if you guys have never heard of that, is a game where there's X number of players and the agreed upon rules and you go play the game. Chess, baseball, football, all those. Like when someone decides what, what's up Kevron? Uh, when someone decides that they have done, you know, whoever scored the most points in X amount of time, game ends, that person's the winner, okay? And then there are infinite games. And the point of the infinite game is that to keep the game going. So players can enter and leave at any time. There is no set objectives except to continue the game. So everybody seems to always have a problem with those kind of games on what is that, okay? And so that's why I want to give some context to what we're doing here. So when you're in a relationship with somebody, that's an infinite game. There's no being number one at marriage. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so same thing 
in business, a lot of people you'll hear them talk about and use analogies towards having it be this finite game. We want to have the most revenue by 2024. Well, that's a metric that you set up. Do your competitors know that? They don't even know what your metrics are. Are they judging themselves off the same metrics you are? Does Apple judge themselves off the same uh, judgments as Microsoft? You know, obviously we're not a public company, so some people would say it's all based around the stock market. Is that really the best judge and stuff? So obviously we do have metrics where, you know, we want to help more people now than tomorrow. Well, that's a never ending cycle of improvement. Um, and so there are things that guys, you don't get judged on. We don't have a commission based structure here because we're not driving for short term, selling somebody a quarter today, if they're going to come back the next day and also buy an eighth, you know, how can we judge that that's better for that customer to buy a quarter today or an eighth today and an eighth tomorrow? So uh, we look at this as we are trying to help people. And so we literally, all policies and procedures are designed around what we try and design them around, uh, being on the infinite side of it. So I just want you guys to have the mindset of the same mindset that we have, is our goal is always to help more customers in the most enjoyable shopping experience. As every one of you have at least had to watch a video of me reading the mission, <laughs> Uh, and probably had it rephrased multiple times by other people. We have four paragraphs in our mission and three of the paragraphs that literally talks about us not being profit driven, not being short term, and literally having lower return on investment. And so I do want you to know some of the people that I had exit interviews with had struggles around that we don't sit there and go, hey man, you just sold X amount of weed, great job. Because we don't base our success, like God, we still gotta keep the lights on, and there's a lot of things that go in on that, but it, we're all team-based. So with that, guys, that was literally the only thing I wanted to go over and give you guys some context of that to kind of help you guys have a mindset of like when Lacey's talking to you, when Dalton's talking to you about where our mindset is at and how we're always trying to improve. I mean, like even since some of you guys have been here, we've rolled out new training things, new policies, all kinds of stuff because we're in an infinite game of continual improvement every day. What's the biggest frustration with customers? Is it fifty dollar ounces? Yeah, it's yeah. thirty five ounces or thirty five. Yeah. People get yeah. heated about that. Yeah. They'll yeah. turn around and just walk out. Yeah. There are some people that are super chill about it and then other people will flip their yeah. lid. Yeah. yeah. Or yeah. like it'd be nice if we had more hats. Yeah, it's super it's just dude, we are so sorry. This is that's well, that's what I'm trying to explain to you guys. If I was on that, because I've been down there next to you guys when someone's, and it, trust me, it pains me to see somebody upset like that, is, man, I'm so sorry. We literally have our caller. They are calling every farm in the state, and we are like, and then when the people got those crazy good $35 ounces, and that, Dude, that, that we took, took that to the face, that was enjoyable. And just being like, being like, yeah, and I told people, we bought out the farm. They don't have a gram left. We bought everything. Yeah, we are waiting for that. Like we bought it. It wasn't that we're like, oh, we'll just take a couple of these. Right. We bought everything they had, you know? And so that's the kind of message that I hope you guys can convey to customers because once again, they're definitely gonna be upset over that. What up guys? Okay, so just finished up with an all company wide meeting. Uh, we had, you know, obviously the store has to be open all the time. So we split it up two separate meetings, an hour each. Those meetings will get longer going forward. Um, some phenomenal feedback from staff members. Don't know how much of that meeting Steve is gonna be able to show you guys. Um, but the big takeaways is there's some areas for improvement and, um, and it's just always nice to have team members who are willing to speak up and say where we're falling short so that we can improve. So I think that's the big uh, thing that we took out of from that meeting. Obviously there's some technical, technical things of like, hey, we need to do this or help with that or whatever, but um, it was a very, uh, helpful to get uh, genuine honest feedback so uh, hopefully you guys are able to see some of that meeting and uh, and then we'll go from there so I have to now run over because we're getting a bunch of equipment back today from the liquor control board getting like where we used to have all these cameras up here we used to actually have a camera up here and a camera over there and a camera right where these boxes are like we got a lot of equipment coming back so kind of pumped about that but I got to get in a car I have to take two vans over there probably just to fit it all back. So uh, there'll be a little bit of uh, old school unboxing. Uh, it's not brand new stuff, but uh, it will be nice to be able to get it all back. And uh, that's gonna be a project for me and Steve later today. So guys, I gotta get in the car. Peace. You go focus on buying okay. weed. Okay, you don't need help? Yeah. Gotcha, okay.
Good making sure. Yep. Okay, Steve, we're going kind of slow. Um, yeah. I'm not Steve, I'm the people. I'm the people. Okay, guys. Don't know how Steve's going to cut this together. <laughs> we're carrying computers up. This is the live streaming computer that brought you 380 plus episodes of the Chronic Cast. That's this bad boy right here. Got. Look at all those camera inputs that we built into it. Hmm. Why did they need to take this computer? I fired The dude literally had these just like loose in the back of like a giant sprinter, and I was like, there's no fucking way these didn't bang over. Totally took it on the front part of the case. Like, that's the biggest thing. Like, the guy literally, like, you can tell that they treated everything with such disrespect. Okay. They use some bubble wrap. None. Zero bubble wrap. Ooh. Like, I don't even understand the, like, the one computer got bubble wrapped. It may have been already pre bubble wrapped by us. It's in a closet. <laughs> so, in this box, they had five or six cameras all with the lenses on them all just like no caps like our l series like lenses was on the bottom with four cameras on top of it they've all been on their act like it's just painful podcast might have just got a little more interesting guys so you know when you said like random do you just back everything up and just keep it hard drive forever <laughs> Yeah, I just let people store it for me for a little while. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve more hard drives. Also, the plate <laughs> for the tripod that's like the plate now is as expensive as the tripod because it's so fucking old. Oh, you wanted more cameras? A7S2. I do want, I know you hate it. I just do want to play with that thing. Just shoved in there. There's another GH3. Oh, there's my. Uh, 5D Mark II, classified. Nice. And then, oh wait, you know, just a 5D Mark IV. <laughs> Fuck it, we don't care. I'll just shove those off, and then, like my personal <laughs> camera. What is that? It was just in storage, just in a box. It's a, uh, like, old school Lumex right. DMC LX2, dude, for some super camera nerds out there. Carry anything on my trip up. I'll do this. I'll do this for the. I'll do this for the vloggers. Okay. So, what is the most expensive Star Wars memorabilia, single piece of Star Wars memorabilia ever? Give any guess, Steve. You won't, you won't get it. So, so I mean, it, could it be like a lot of people guess the start like loot Skywalker's lightsaber, and you'd be wrong, and then you'd be like, oh, it's Darth Vader's lightsaber, of course. No, nope, you'd be wrong. Oh, it's, it's Darth Vader's helmet. You wouldn't even be close. Oh, it's it's the mock, the physical built thing of the Death Star. No, you'd be wrong. It is the camera that shot it all. The camera that shot it all went for something like $875,000 or something like that. After it had been bought at auction, at auction of a liquidation sale for about 14 grand. Pretty good return on investment that? Yeah, trash talk for sure. Those, those lenses are the lenses that camera used and actually did use from Industrial Light and Magic, Lucas Films. And so they took that and I was just like, dude, you guys took, hey, you guys just took a real piece of history. So, should we be using those lenses? Some people on this would say, what the fuck are you doing? But they still create such a beautiful image that we decided to shoot weed with them. Yo, what up guys? Uh, we are literally having to pull everything out of the gear room because there's just now too much here. So we are literally organizing it and writing on where everything goes. So we've changed up 
it used to be lenses and cameras on which we're now doing a separate just camera shelf i don't hopefully we'll fit everything on that uh, just lenses on another shelf plus plus some uh, lens pelican cases and then we're going to move on to audio so probably show you some time lapse on this stuff but uh it's just me and uh steve here we'll just uh fucking head down on it so let's uh see how this goes you're trying to basically do preparation for 500 training videos like 500 training videos it's and you're trying to not have to renumber all but um yeah we're gonna do it because we're gonna we're in this for the long haul as i talked about today with the whole staff we're in an infinite game so of course when you judge things based around that you're trying to build something to last your kids and your kids kids and all that kind of stuff putting in this time and energy seems like a very small very small piece and will definitely pay off in the much long run um so i'm so i'm looking forward to it but uh with that guys um let's uh let's take a look here so uh we got a big mess that steve is probably going to beat me here tomorrow uh <laughs> literally got a garbage can in our way right now so just showing you guys real quick uh the camera's all got moved around again so steve's gonna be working on that it doesn't look like we really have enough room and we're gonna redo the entire gopro area i have to get car mounts mounted back up in the cars um, and we need to get the headphones all actually in one place and we got to fix this and we got to pull all this out so i think i think a lot more stuff from this room is moving out <laughs> into this room where it is just all out right now but um yeah i think the funnest thing for me is uh at least from the stuff coming back today is so we got one Let's just, do, let's just do a quick count. Let's get a total number of what people are like, were you guys really filming that much? Yeah. Okay, so we got three here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Once again, these are all each five terabytes. But 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. 32 hard drives, just what we got back today. Man, even if you just average them all out to four terabytes, that's a lot. Oh, then, uh, so, where are we at? We're at 32, 33. So there's two more, well, those are both doubles. Um, that doesn't include any of the thumb drives. So right now with, uh, so yeah, so let's just go do the count. So we're at 35, let's call it 35, uh, in case I'm one off. That guy in the corner is another eight. So eight uh, plus 35 is 43. Uh, if you are gonna notice, that guy over there looks just like that guy down there. So that's another eight. Um, so. 43 that's 51 so 51 oh we just found some more 52 53 54 55 56 56 average out on five uh four terabytes we'll just i mean most of those are eight terabytes but we'll just average them all to that make it easy um so yeah four times uh you know close to 60 so call 55 for easy math um 200 plus terabytes not including a single hard drive in any of our internal computers and all the and i didn't even count the many solid states that we carry around so um yeah we uh we record a lot of media here and we do that one for you guys um and we have been investing in this in a long time you guys aren't seeing that much of all the the vlog stuff that we want to put out um and then a lot of stuff like oh, this is this is one of my favorite ones is train but tender training videos right here guys 2015 <laughs> way over four years ago um and those ones are the professional done ones not even the early ones that we shot before that so 
uh, we have really been trying and investing in this for a long time. So when we try, when I try and explain that to people of how much energy and effort it takes to actually do this, and it's not just the fact that we've done it one time, it's that we've continuously been improving the process. So a training video today has literally been shot five, six, seven times because we've been updating it and improving it. That's what we're doing. That's what you get. You got to jump all that signing up with a franchise with us. And it's one of the reasons why we don't license. We're not willing to license the name. We only want a franchise because we want to you to be successful. We're doing everything in our power. I can't guarantee you're successful. We're doing everything in our power to make you successful if you sign up with us. So guys, I think with that, I think it's a good closing day. A lot of good vibes getting all of our film equipment back. Uh, pretty stoked about it. And so I hope you guys have had an awesome day. And uh, tomorrow's gonna be crazy but I'm stoked about it. See you tomorrow, guys. Peace.